In lesson 8.6, you will solve rational equations. The first rational equation that we're going to solve is a proportion because we have one rational expression or fraction on each side of the equal sign. To solve a proportion, we set cross products equal to one another. So we have 3 times x plus 4. That's one cross product, and it's equal to 1 times x squared plus 4x. Okay, now we'd want to distribute and get rid of parentheses. We have 3x plus 12 on the left, and on the right we have x squared plus 4x. This is a quadratic equation, so we want to get it in standard form, and I'm going to get 0 on the left so that I keep my x squared term positive. When I subtract 3x from both sides, 4x minus 3x is 1x. And when I subtract 12 from both sides, I get this trinomial on the right that should factor into a binomial times a binomial. And then I can use the zero product property to solve. So factors of x squared go first, x times x. Factors of 12 that have a difference of 1 are going to be 4 and 3. And I want to make the 4 positive and the 3 negative so that positive 4x plus negative 3x is positive 1x in the middle, and positive 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. So those factors check. Now I can set those factors equal to 0 and solve for x. So x should equal negative 4, or x should equal positive 3. But now I have to remember to check for extraneous solutions because I have denominators in the original equation with variables in them. And I can't have a denominator of 0 because we can't divide by 0. So when I check negative 4, I see in the right hand side of this equation, negative 4 plus 4 is going to give me 0 in the denominator. So negative 4 is not going to check. That's a poor solution an extraneous solution. And now when I check 3, I'll have a denominator of 7 on the right and a denominator of 9 plus 12 or 21 on the left. So 3 checks, it's a good solution for this equation. Okay, in problem 2, so far this baseball season you have gotten a hit 12 times out of 60 at bats. How many consecutive hits do you have to get to raise your batting average to .360? So right now your batting average is 12 out of 60, 12 sixtieths, but you want to know how many consecutive hits, and let's say x, you have to make in order to raise that batting average to 0 .360. Okay, well, on the right hand side we have a, a fraction. I can write that decimal as 36 hundredths. And then I can simplify 36 hundredths. I can get rid of a factor of 4 top and bottom. Simplifying it to 9 25ths. And now it's just a proportion. It's a rational equation that's a proportion and we can set cross products equal to one another. So 25 times 12 plus x is equal to 9 times 60 plus x. And distributing on the left, I've got 25 times 12, which is 300, and 25 times x is 25x. On the right, I have 9 times 60, that's 540, and 9 times x. Okay, now getting my x terms on the left, I have 25x take away 9x, that's 16x. And getting my constant terms on the right, by subtracting 300, I get 240. And now when I divide both sides by 16 to get x alone, I find out that the number of consecutive hits that you must uh, make would be 15. So 15 hits are what? will be needed to raise your batting average to 0 .360. Okay, here we have some more rational equations. 
These rational equations are not fractions on both sides of the equal sign. They're not proportions. They have three rational expressions or terms in them, so we're going to have to use a different method. We're going to need the least common denominator or the least common multiple of the denominators in order to multiply both sides by that value and get rid of the denominators in these equations. So the least common denominator we can find by looking at each denominator. When I look at the first denominator in this first equation, I need a factor of x. Then I'll look at the second denominator, 2. I'll need a factor of 2. And when I look at the third denominator, I need a factor of x, but I already have a factor of x in my LCD, so I'm not going to put another one in. So the least common denominator is 2x, and I want to multiply both sides of this equation by 2x to clear the equation of denominators. I'll be distributing on the left, so I'll really be multiplying every term, every fraction in this equation by that least common denominator of 2x. Okay, and now I'll simplify each term. I can cancel that factor of x top and bottom in this first term, so I'm left with 6. And then I can cancel my factor of 2 in the second term, so I'm left with minus x. And then on the right, I can cancel that factor of x top and bottom, and I'm left with 24. So now to solve for x, I could subtract 24 from both sides and get negative 18 on the left and add x to both sides to get x on the right. So x should equal negative 18, and if I check by putting negative 18 into the original equation for x, I see that I don't get a denominator of 0, so this value checks. Okay, in our second uh, equation, we want to first find a least common denominator in LCD. So I'll look at the first denominator. I need an x plus 1 in my least common denominator. When I look at the second denominator, it's 1, 4 over 1, so I don't need to put in a factor of 1. And when I look at the third denominator, it's x plus 1 again, and I already have an x plus 1, so I don't have to put another one in. Okay, so now I'll use that least common denominator, and I'll multiply every term in this equation by that least common denominator. in order to clear the equation of denominators. Okay, so simplifying each term now, I can cancel that denominator of x plus 1 top and bottom, so I'm left with 5x. and. On the other side of the equal sign, I can distribute 4 times x plus 1. So I have 4x plus 4. And then in the third term, cancel that denominator, top and bottom, or cancel that binomial, top and bottom. And then I'll be left with negative 5. Okay, so solving for x, subtracting 4x from both sides, 5x take away 4x is 1x. And 4 take away 5 is negative 1. But now when I check, negative 1 is going to give me 0 denominators. So it's not a good solution, and I'll have to conclude that there's no solution. The only solution I found was extraneous. So the equation has no solution. Okay, now in the third problem, we need to decide on a least common denominator again in order to clear the equation of denominators. So I want to look at all of these denominators in factored form, but this denominator is a difference of two perfect squares, so I want to factor it to see what it's made up of. So factors of x squared are x times x, factors of 4 are 2 times 2, and because it's the difference of two perfect squares, I need to get rid of that middle term by making uh, one of these uh, binomials with a positive sign and the other with a, a negative sign. I'm going to erase that. Tried to give it two positive signs, but I need one of each. Okay, so 
x minus 2 times x plus 2 is equal to x squared minus 4. Okay, now I can decide on my least common denominator. When I look at the first one, I need an x minus 2. When I look at the second denominator, I need an x minus 2. I already have it in there, so I don't have to put it in again, but I also need an x plus 2. And when I look at the third denominator, it's 1, so I don't have to put in anything more. This is my least common denominator, and I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by that least common denominator. Distributing on the right. fit this in here, times 1, okay? So now I can go back and simplify. I can cancel those like factors top and bottom, those binomials, and I'll be left with x plus 2 times 3x minus 2, so I'm going to distribute. I'll have x times 3x, that's 3x squared, and I'll have x times negative 2, that's negative 2x, but then I'll have 2 times 3x, which is 6x, so I'll have negative 2x added to positive 6x, that's positive 4x. And then I'll have 2 times negative 2, which is negative 4. So that binomial times a binomial gives me this trinomial. Now on the other side, I'm canceling x minus 2 and x plus 2 in this first term. So I'm just left with 6. And in the second term, I have 1 times those binomials. So I'll distribute. And I know that that's the sum and difference of the same two terms, so I'm going to get that x squared minus 4, that binomial back, that difference of two perfect squares. Okay, and now it's quadratic, so I want to um, get it in standard form, so I'll move everything to the left this time and get 0 on the right. So when I subtract x squared from both sides, I have 3x squared minus 1x squared, that's 2x squared, and then I have 4x in the middle. On the right hand side, I have 6 minus 4, that's 2, and when I subtract 2 from both sides, I'm going to have a total of negative 6 on the right. Okay, and now I can simplify this equation that I have by getting rid of a factor of 2 in every term. So when I divide by 2, I'm left with x squared plus 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. And now I can try and factor that trinomial into a binomial times a binomial x times x is x squared, factors of 3 that have a difference of 2, 3 and 1, the only factors of 3 are 3 and 1. I want to make the 3 positive and the 1 negative, so that positive 3x plus negative 1x is positive 2x in the middle, and positive 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. And now using the zero product property, I'll set those factors equal to 0, and solve for x. So I find that x is equal to negative 3, or x could be equal to positive 1. Now when I check those solutions, negative 3 is not going to give me a zero denominator, and positive 1 will not give me a zero denominator. So they both check. I have two good solutions to this rational equation. Include with your notes of this video guided practice problems 1 through 9 odd on pages 590 and 591 of your textbook.